let us look at forecasting what we have here is some x and y values and this is very simple all we have to do is we'll copy the same value here we have to write let me just also copy the dates down all we have to do is to write forecast then we select the last value that we have which is 11th march the i mean the date for which we want to find the forecast then we have the known wise which is nothing but our visitors and the known x would be the dates that we have it gives us the forecast let's also put some dollar signs here and if we drag it down we get all the results let me also remove the decimals and align it in the center of it that's all there is to it and then you can also do a forecast linear which is forecast linear which will have the moment exactly the same thing so i can in fact copy the same thing to show you with forecast linear as you can see we get the same results exactly like this there's not much else to it all right what i would also like to show you here is that of course the forecast equation will give you the results but what if you want to make a chart so let's select my data like this and insert a line chart and you can see the forecast value like this and i hope you can see why this number was written here if you don't write it then this would not be connected so just always make sure to copy the same value the last known value next to this like this that's all excellent let's look at the next one what we want to do here is again we have data till the 10th so i'll copy it till the 17th and here we want to use forecast ets which is written the forecasted value using the exponential smoothing method everything else remains the same we have the last value we have our values here in which we are going to select visitors then we have the timeline and it gives us the forecasted value let's just make sure that i have done this correctly just a moment yeah that seems okay and let's just drag it down and we get the results like this what we can also do here is to do something called forecast ets confit which will give us the confidence interval select the date and visitors and the timeline and this gives us a number like this and i'll explain how to use it so this is our confidence interval and what we can smartly do now everybody is to let me first remove the decimals okay so what we can do now is to simply say minus and here we say plus and this is very handy and very common because this gives you the error margin for example 
This time when I make a chart, we should be able to select all the values here. So I'm not really sure how to show this to you, but maybe we can just select this and this insert charts and a line chart and we're able to see this. Right? So we have the error margin as well, like this. Which is what we call the upper bound and the lower bound. And I think I made a small mistake. I did not put the dollar sign. That's why my chart looks so peculiar. Let me just make sure to put the dollar signs here as well. And once we do that, much better. Now our chart looks like this. And as you can see, very nicely, we are able to see the orange, which is the ETS, and we can see the lower bound and the upper bound as well. Make sure to just read a little bit about exponential smoothing. One of the most common methods used for forecasting. And what it basically says is that we are assigning exponentially decreasing weights over time. So recent values have higher importance and the older the value, the lesser the importance attributed to it. Obviously, this is not the only thing used in forecasting. There are many other things that we can do as well. One more thing I would like to show you is this new option that has been added if you look at the data tab, there is a forecast sheet. It's a new feature, so some of you have it, some of you might not. But by the time you watch this course, hopefully you do have it. What we can do is we can simply click here. And as you can see, with very little effort, it creates a forecast for us. You can also go to options and select a lot of different things like the seasonality factor, forecast statistics, how to fill up the missing points and the confidence interval, right? How to aggregate values. And if I create, it creates in one click the forecast for me with the lower bound, upper bound, and some additional values as well. I'll not get into details here, but um, you have some additional statistics that have been given to you. And as you can see, what I had done earlier manually, the same thing had this done here. The small difference that you notice here is that they have also selected these additional arguments. For example, seasonality and the data completion. And in the forecast ATS confident, they have selected the confidence level, seasonality, and the data completion. Of course, these topics are quite detailed, and you can always go online and read more about them if you're interested. But for most of you, simply being able to create a forecast would get the job done.